Hello, everyone. Um, oh. Oops. <laughs> you need to call someone from ID. Okay, let me unplug it. Unplug it. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Han Bin Liu from Red Hat, Red Hat Network Service Team. And uh, today I will give us an um, introduction about the Linux tunnel. Okay, here's the end now. First, we will talk about uh, what's tunnel and uh, then um, what tunnels usually use in Linux. And then last, we will talk about uh, what tunnels could be chosen for cloud network. Okay, here. Here's what's the tunnel in the real world. It's an underground passageway and uh, vehicles could go through it from one end to another end. And uh, here's what a um, tunnel looks like in the network. Um, the Linux tunnel is, um, in the concept, is um, uh, it, it could encapsulate a network packet within another protocol and uh, transmit them um, over a, a network. It allows you to create a virtual network link between the two endpoints and uh, provide um, security and um, private communication over the existing network. So let's see some what, what a packet looks like in the network. First, you see is the sorry. Okay. Let's wait. Okay. Oh, here, here is uh, what a um, packet look like on the internet. First is the Ethernet part, and then is um, IP header, it may be IPv4 or IPv6 in the recent years. And the next is the uh, TCP or UDP header. And uh, the last is the payload or the data it carries. So what if, what if this is an um, internal, uh, internal package and you want to uh, transmit from one end, one internet, internal network to another internet network through the public IPv4 network. Here is uh, what we do for IP IP tunnel. Here is the internal packets you have in the uh, private network, and uh, you put it, we put it in uh, in put the uh, existing or the outer header over the internal um, uh, network header, and then the outer Ethernet. So this is uh, what an IP IP tunnel looks like. As the name said, it's an IP over IP tunnel. So this is simple. And uh, as, the name as the name said, it's IP over IP, uh, IP tunnel. So um, it's used to connect the two internal network internal IPv4 subnet uh, through the public IPv4 internet. Uh, the, overhead, the overhead is very simple, so it only could, it could only transmit the unicast packets. Okay, this is very old protocol. It, it was developed at the um, uh, 1990s. So, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Looks the connection is not stable. Okay, I'll unplug it and I'll plug in again. Okay, 
Let me go to it, uh, go, go it quickly. It was developed uh, at uh, 1990s. So after some years, there we have IPv6. Uh, it used, it uh, started used to start used in the internet network. But how to connect the IPv6 uh, networks between the pl uh, public IPv4 network? We have the SIT tunnel. This was developed at uh, uh, year of 2005, and uh, its name is stands for simple internet, simple internet transition. The main purpose of this tunnel is to uh, communicate the isolated IPv6 um, network between the global IPv4 network. But after years of development, uh, we also support um, IPv4 headers. So, uh, in fact, no, the SIT tunnel uh, has already covered the IP tunnel, the function. Okay. So, but after recent years, the IPv6 uh, network also uh, development, and uh, we have a lot of global IPv6 networks. So, here's the IPv6 version of SIT tunnel. It's IPv6, it's IPv6 tunnel, and uh, the out header, you can see, is uh, using is using IPv6 headers. So this is IPv4 version and this is IPv6 version. So recently, we, all the tunnels we talked about, um, the data are playing in the network, network. If anyone captured the packets, they can know what's inside the, inside in the packets. So how to protect our data? So we have more breaks <laughs> between the each slide. So how to protect the data? Um, there is um, IPsec. IPsec actually have transmission model and the tunnel model. Here we will only talk about the tunnel in this in this talk. The IPsec. IPsec uh, support two models. One is the uh, edge model; is uh, also uh, it will do data authentication. Another is, is ESP model; it's, uh, it, it will encapsulate the inner data. So here, uh, the the edge edge on edge model only do authentication for the inner um, data, and the ESP will do encapsulate the inner data. Um, but it's also support to combine them together. So you have both edge header and the ESP header. Okay, so we can protect our data, but sometimes we need to connect our network from, we want to connect to our company or school or some private network, and then we need to do some user identification. How to do that? Here we have uh, PPP, PPTP tunnel and the L2TP tunnel. Uh, L2TP is a level two uh, protocol, and the PPTP is only a point to point protocol. So the, both of them are based on PPP protocol. But uh, L2TP, L2TP is level two, so um, it supports to create multi tunnels between the two endpoints. Um, but um, L2TP, the, okay. L2TP, it has um, uh, basic uh, crypto method compared to L2TP. L2TP only uh, could combine with the IPsec we, we just, uh, just, uh, just uh, talked. So PPTP is a little faster than L2TP because L2P, L2TP need to do much more encryption. But um, on the other hand, the I, uh, PPTP is a little, is not uh, security and uh, easy to be cracked. So it's not recommended in the recent years. This protocol is, uh, was developed at uh, 1990s, the old, very old. Well, the L2TP is, uh, is developed uh, at uh, 2000, year of 2000 year. So it's much, uh, it's a little newer. But uh, as we talked about, uh, PPTP is uh, faster, but not security. And uh, L2TP is security, but uh, a little slower. So, how to balance the performance and the security? 
Okay, we have OpenVPN. OpenVPN is very famous. It's also created at uh, 2001, and uh, this is the default. Its default is using UDP module. So it has a very good performance, and uh, also it uses libssl to encrypt the data. So it's also very, uh, the security is also very good. So, but uh, it's, it's, it's popular since 2000, so it's already have 20 years. And uh, recently we have um, Regard Tunnel. Regard Tunnel is uh, created at um, 2015. And uh, it's also merged to Linux at uh, 2019. 19. So it's a modern um, tunnel. It ha uh, has a very Okay. Regard is a very new, very an, uh, new and uh, open source VPN protocol, and uh, is much faster than the open VPN because it you, it has a very simple design, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's also have a lower overhead. The overhead is uh, is not much. It's very um, simple, and uh, the um, and. Um, also, it uses a modern uh, encrypt, encrypt, encryption protocol that, uh, compared with the SS, uh, open, open VPN, which uses SSL, which is old. Which <coughs> old. So, so Vergat is more, uh, more security and uh, more fast. So, all the current tunnels we talk about has a fixed header, and uh, it, it also Support it also has um, t they are limited to with a fixed inner protocols like uh, we have IP over IP or IP over IPv6. Um, the users need to configure uh, different tunnel with different inner inner protocol. So how to um, how is there a way to not care the inner protocols? We can uh, and use only one outer. Outer header, outer protocol. We have the GRE tunnel. GRE is called the uh, generic routing encapsulation. It's also a very old protocol. It's uh, designed at uh, 1994 and uh, uh, updated at the uh, year of 2000. As the name said, it's a generic tunnel, so the protocol is independent. Not sure if what well, is because my computer is being issue. <laughs> so, the, the GRE tunnel is a uh, uh, protocol independent uh, uh, tunnel. So, it uh, supports um, IP, IP in, as an inner header and a PPP. Also, it supports uh, Ethernet, uh, Ether, uh, Ethernet header. Um, it also support to transmit the uh, multicast traffic. As we talked uh, uh, before, <coughs> an IP IP tunnel only support unicast packets, and uh, generally uh, uh, GRE is support uh, multicast routing, multicast traffic. As also its name is uh, um, generic routing protocol, it's so it support uh, routing uh, protocols like OSPF, but um, this not not support on Linux. Some the the, um, some routers, some uh, like Cisco routers, they support this, this with OS, OSPF. Uh, in Linux, we have GRE tunnel and uh, IPv6 GRE tunnel, which is IPv4 and IPv6 version. And uh, it's also there is also a GRE type tunnel. The difference is we have the, we have an inner Ethernet in header, so it uh, could carry level two packets through the internet. And here also IP6 GRE type tunnel. And uh, last is a ESPN tunnel. It's called uh, Encapsulate uh, Remote Switch Port Analyzer. Um, in the switch, in the hardware switch, there's a function that uh, it could uh, monitor one port, one port traffic to another port through level two. 
as is in the same switch. But sometimes we want to monitor all the traffic uh, to <coughs> another, another uh, subnet. So with uh, this protocol, oh. with this protocol, we can Uh, with, uh, with this protocol, we can monitor the uh, uh, port traffic through the uh, routable internet, internet and uh, transmit to other internet, so other, other subnet. Yeah. So, so the uh, good part is we can extend the uh, basic port monitoring capacity from layer two to layer three. So, so the tunnels we can we can see the tunnels can happen at the uh, uh, multi levels. Here we have GRE over IP header or uh, IP IPA or SIT. Most of are, are based on the IP header. But uh, also in the recent years, uh, more and more tunnels. Uh, uh, happen at the UDP level. Here we have three UDP tunnels. Uh, first, the, the full tunnel is full over UDP. It's, all, it's developed at uh, 2014, so it's a new protocol. The advantage of using UDP tunnel is UDP works over uh, we can use uh, the UDP works with uh, with the existing hardware infra infrastructure, like the RSS in EEC, the receive side scaling, and the EMCP or switch, the eco cost uh, multipass routing protocol, and other like um, uh, checksum offload and the GSO GRO. With this feature, the this makes UDP tunnel has a significant performance in, uh, increase compared with the IP tunnel. So that's why we talked about the OpenVPN and the RealGuard, they both uh, uh, over the UDP, so the performance is very good. So the next is the bare UDP tunnel. Bare UDP, <coughs> um, bare UDP tunnel is, um, The full tunnel, full tunnel is support um, uh, IP and the GRE header as the inner header. And the bare UDP supports IP and the MP MPLS as header as the inner header. And the last uh, is the GOE tunnel. The difference uh, compared with these two others is the GOE tunnel has a GOE header. GOE is, is a generic UDP encapsulation, encapsulation tunnel. So it's a, since it's a header, but the header is also uh, lightweight, so the speed speed is also good, but um, um, it's it allows the header have the uh, optional optional data field and uh, could be used for virtualization, security, and uh, congestion controls. Okay, the next is the VXLAN. VXLAN is also developed at. Uh, uh, the year of 20, uh, 20, uh, 2014. So in the uh, year of like 2000 or uh, 10 years ago or 15, uh, 20 years ago, uh, most of the data center are in the same place uh, or uh, we separate the uh, network with VLAN and uh, it's, it's enough in that time but after years of uh, we have cloud network. Uh, the data center may may, may how uh, may separate in a lot of places. Uh, so how could we connect this data center? So um, VexLAN is called a virtual extend extendable LAN. It was develop developed to address the limitation of the traditional VLANs. And the, the traditional VLAN it uh, has only 
4,000 uh, VLAN IDs, which is not enough for the large-scale uh, data center. And the uh, VXLAN, it has a 24-byte uh, VXLAN network identifier. It's called uh, VNI. It allows up to 16 million virtual networks, which is very uh, more than enough. And um, also, VXLAN uh, encapsulates the uh, encapsulate on layer two Ethernet frame, um, so it uh, could carry the layer two uh, layer two uh, data over the uh, UDP header. Um, this means you can create an um, uh, isolated network on layer two across the data center and the cloud network. This, uh, this fle uh, flexibility also allows uh, VMs to, to be deployed at, uh, um, across the data center or cloud network. And uh, you can uh, migrate it from different physical place or data center and uh, still keep the same logical network. Mm, yes. And uh, there, are, there are also some other protocols uh, like the like uh, like the VXLAN, like the NVGRE. NVGRE is also has uh, NVGRE is um, is uh, use a GRE header to encapsulate the data compared with the UDP header, and also like uh, STT is use a stateless TCP to encapsulate data. Um, they all has uh, they they all has. Um, they are, they are different protocols, but they have similar um, uh, similar functions to how the uh, like the identity file to uh, make to um, to address the problem to address the v, uh, VLAN issue. Okay. But uh, you uh, as we as we see, there are there are. Uh, VXLAN is popular, but also how we, uh, uh, how the NVGRE or STT, they all have a phys has a fixed fixed header, and it's not all, uh, easy to extend. So, what if we want to have some other features in the future? It's not it's not easy to to do that. So, we have the Geneo tunnel. Geneo tunnel Geneo is a uh, Generic uh, network virtualization, and uh, from this picture, it looks like the same. But actually, the new header is a um, flexible header. It uh, could have it support to how uh, using a type length type length value option, the TLV option. So this could make us to add new functions without modify the basic protocol. It's also use um, it's also use um, um, larger VNI field compared with VXLAN. Uh, Geneo use uh, 20, 22 bytes, and uh, VXLAN only have 20. Uh, Geneo has 32, and the VXLAN only have 24. So this is all, this is more than enough now. Um, it also support uh, uh, built-in support. The Geneo also support uh, built-in encryption to make the data more security. So, um, also, also the VXLAN use uh, uh, encapsulate layer two, while while the Geneo could uh, encapsulate um, layer two or layer three, so it's more flexible. So many many sources could uh, become the New future um, tunnels we can use on uh, we can use the ON and the ON is currently still it is using the Geneo tunnel as the default tunnel. So that's what that's almost what we talk about on what we know uh, Linux support now. Um, let's think. Uh, let let's uh, since the cloud network is more popular, so let's. Uh, uh, let's think about uh, what kind of tunnels should be used in the cloud network. First, I think first uh, the um, cloud ne network may have different products. So, GI tunnel should be fit because it uh, could support 
uh, different inner protocols. And uh, next, uh, as we know, VIXLAN. VIXLAN is popular and uh, it uh, could be, it has a uh, uh, large scale, large uh, VI uh, field to separate the networks. And uh, last is the uh, general tunnel, it's the future. It's it, it designed for the future. So, okay, that's all the tunnels we know and uh, I want to introduce. Thank you. Any questions?